Well, my friends, welcome to a snowy laden land. End of January. Here we are, fuel for the soul. Before we go much further, I just want to say that we're back to church live. Uh, last Sunday, uh, January 23rd, we started again, um, full protocol, being careful. We had a good group come out, and when you're ready, we welcome you back. If you feel uncomfortable, then take the service in online, and we want to provide for that for you, and just be aware of that. But we're back, and we're hoping and praying that this will be step one, and then step two, and then get going again. Uh, some programs will start in the weeks ahead, and we will keep you informed in that. So just want to update you with that. Well, today, I come to you with a lament of sorts, um, just talking from my heart. So I want to, I hope that this connects in some way, but just talking from my heart. So here you go. Liz and I enjoy so much feeding the birds during the winter months, especially during the winter months. Uh, inevitably, we feed the squirrels as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't get me wrong. The whole year through is enjoyable as well. Um, and in the spring, the orioles, the hummingbirds, the grosbeaks, the robins, and so many other species of birds um, find their way to our backyard. But the winter, the cold, the snow-covered ground, um, the doves, the sparrows, the cardinals, the odd blue jay, woodpeckers, and others, um, others that I don't even know what kind of birds they are, I have a soft place in my heart to feed them, provide some seed during the cold snap. Um, but they seemed lost when a, that heavy blanket of snow covers the seeds, and they're trying to find their food. You say, why do I talk about feeding birds, especially in the cold winter days? Well, let me ask you, where do you find spiritual nourishment during challenging times, dark times, discouraging days that turn into weeks or even months? Where do you find spiritual fuel for the soul when a blanket of snow or despair covers the food, the nourishment. This short connection point we call fuel for the soul, um, that's awesome that you tune into this, and I love it. But where besides these 10 minutes do you fill your soul with God stuff? And I say it again, when that blanket of snow covers the food, the blanket of challenges covers the food. Maybe you're one that would get a good book and read it and it lifts your soul. Good on you. Or maybe quiet moments of reflection where you just close your eyes and reflect on the goodness of God and what you are blessed with and who you are. Um, maybe a daily feeding from God's Word. Some of you are systematic readers and you're reading through God's Word once again and it inspires you. Uh, maybe a time uh, that you listened to music of worship and comfort. That's something that I um, connect with, uh, where no one's in the house for a few minutes and you put some music on and, yeah. How about a warm cup of coffee or a hot chocolate or a cafe mocha where you sit and visit with a friend? My friends, we find fuel for the soul in those things. We find seeds. Now, just like the snow covers the bird seed, we have moments where grief creeps back in. Sadness consumes our being, blankets our focus. The future isn't as bright as it once was. The food is covered, but it's covered, but it's still there. Just as you are feeling stronger and focused and ready to do great things for God in this new year, 
a blanket of some despair or hurt or confusion ruins, ruins everything. And I think that we collectively, uh, as a people, are feeling some of that during these days. Two years, officially two years ago, Canada had their first COVID um, infection where they started to treat it. And for two years, we've been working through this. Your joy is sucked away when you think things are getting better. Vision gets blurred and darkness. Now, all that connection, I want to say that God shows up and brings fuel for the soul in places that you might not ever expect it. This past Saturday, I was invited to attend a funeral of a friend. Uh, COVID times, only by invite. His name was Jim. I was not the officiant. I was just simply a friend sitting in the pews in the chapel at the funeral home. It was the most, well, a most wonderful, uh, heartwarming service of reflections through songs, tributes, and God's word uh, that was read. And as I sat in the chapel, kind of feeling that blanket of despair, of grieving come over me, listening and lamenting, I was profoundly visited and reminded that there's fuel for the soul even in challenging times. Um, for many times, I'm the officiant and I close the door to grief and I close the door to feelings. I know that sounds bad, but that's just something that happens. The service was beautiful, uh, the tribute to a kind friend, but once again, another loss. But what happened was out of my control. During the service, a flood of memories of so many friends who I have lost over the years came to me. And they were playing a song by Josh Groban, You Raise Me Up. And I've heard the song many, many times. But it profoundly moved me as I realized how many have raised me up. You know the words. When I am down and, oh, my soul so weary, when troubles come and my heart burdened me, then I am still and here, wait here in silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up, the chorus says, so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. And I realized how blessed I was to have all these friends. Now, they're gone. But I stood on their shoulders. They encouraged me. They walked alongside of me. And God gave me fuel for my soul in remembering and appreciating what others have done for me. Images flooded my heart and soul. Pictures of individuals close to me flooded my mind. Face after face, memory after memory, just a flood of thoughts and experiences and memories. But it was nourishment to my soul. A moment of unexpected fuel for the soul from a source not expected my friends, do you realize that God knows already what you stand in need of? And without us declaring a word, he knows what's on our hearts and thoughts before we even speak. Do you think that God can show up and give you nourishment and fuel for your soul in unexpected places? Well, it happened to me. God will meet us in the most unexpected ways and places and moments. To think, to think, attending a funeral of a friend helped me in my journey of grief dealing with other people's losses. To think. It was sad, but it was life-giving. It took despair and darkness and gave joy and light 
for my soul. Fuel for my soul, my friends. Thank you to my friend, Jim Cloley, for your counsel and your care for others, even in your untimely death, to help me at my point of need. And I say, rest in peace, brother. And to you, my friends, fuel for the soul. Don't miss it. God will show up in most unexpected places in unexpected ways. Thanks for letting me share from my heart. Have a great day.